What's up you guys, FSC Trucking. Got a totally different kind of video for you today. In fact, today's more like a uh, update video than anything else. We just got here at the shop, the new shop that I moved into not all that long ago. So let's go on inside and talk a little bit. I got something to show you. Yeah, we got some new boxes, packages. In fact, I forgot that uh, I got some other pieces that are in the pickup truck still I gotta get. But yeah, that's one of the new updates there. Also, my shirt, you guys have probably seen it already. Check them out, fsctrucking.com. It's where I got new merch. So I got this Orwell Gangster Godfather style. We just call it the Orwell Godfather theme shirt with uh, FSC Trucking right here on the top. So obviously, if you've seen the other videos, it's Orwell and then me from a very good day in my life. I was wearing a suit that day with the, the big gangster hat. So, you know, typical Jersey. Of course, here's Orwell. And Orwell is a little messed up. And that's part of today's video we got to touch base on. I want to talk to you about what's going on with Orwell. Why is the cab partially tilted forward and what's going on? Now, we've had some problems here. The last trip we did, well, I got to turn the lights on on this side. Two bays, two separate light switches. But yeah, the last trip we did was back, uh, well, in fact, for you guys, it was like two days ago that you saw it. For me, it was like, I don't know, a month-ish, maybe more, I'm not really sure. So yeah, that's kind of the thing. The last run we did, we went out to Seattle, loaded up in Tacoma and came back. And that's the last trip we did. Um, obviously, if you remember that video, my exhaust stack, the one that worked, is the one that cracked and broke the one that was completely deleted that one is fine no troubles with it i also mentioned in one of my other videos that we had a problem where i could not lift the cab any longer because um i had a hydraulic hose break no it wasn't a hydraulic hose boys and girls it was this right here now this has been rebuilt now but i had a place in green bay re, re uh reseal this so when we install this hopefully it'll work they put new seals in it what this is is this goes underneath this piece right here um i'll show it to you on the other side but this is the hydraulic cylinder that that this piston right here comes up and that's what pushes up on this gigantic spring in here i always thought this was the hydraulic cylinder but no this is just a spring think of a brake maxi basically and that's what unlatches the hooks, the safety hooks. That way, if you were to hit the brake real hard, the cab doesn't flop forward or, God forbid, get in an accident. It locks the cab down. Now, older cab overs, he, um, oh, heck, I don't even know when Freightliner did away with it. There was a manual lock on the back. You had to manually lock and unlock. Where this, I guess to be fancier or more user-friendly, they decided to go with uh, hydraulics. So as you pump the handle, the pressure that starts to lift on the jet on the cab the actual lift cylinder is on the cab itself before the cab starts moving this takes less pressure to unlock these hooks here see that hook there's no pressure in the system so the hook is locked down see it won't raise up and that hook hooks on right here obviously you see i got the cab held up by these jack stands but that's what happens when the lift cylinder starts to raise up pressure on the cab before it can do it it has to max these out so that'll open and then the cab will start going forward but if any part of that hydraulic system fails cab won't go so before i did the uh seattle trip i had fully serviced the truck problem was that's when i found out that that hose i thought was burst in fact that's the hose on the floor right there um, it turned out it wasn't the hose, it was that cylinder, so I had to service the truck with the cab down. Um, that became a big issue. Also, I replaced uh, a few of these wheel studs in the front. Um, I had uh, some going bad. One broke, and uh, they may have been stretched prior. I replaced one maybe about a year ago, but uh, I think some of them were stretched prior, so I wound up replacing a total of five. So that's actually six total one from last year and five more so um i just kind of found the ones that were the threads are just a little bit mangled up and then they, they got replaced so that's what we did did that off camera because i was in a hurry 
So why am I making this video and what's going on today? Well, I honestly, I'm kind of like just wandering around the shop talking to you guys because I really don't really know exactly how this is going to work out because that last trip we did, I have no content after that. I'm fresh out. Orwell hasn't been on the road for a while now. Um, let's get into that. So yeah, long story short, when I got back from the Seattle run round trip, on my way back, if you've seen literally the last video I dropped, I discussed that it was on my way back. In fact, I was in Hagen, Montana when I saw the uh, Facebook post that Tim Gentry's shop had burned straight to the ground. And at that point I was like, okay, I'm gonna get home. I'm gonna jump in the car. I wound up taking a pickup truck in case we wound up doing like work work over there, uh, cleaning up and stuff, hauling equipment, whatever. Um, I, I got home, took a day, and I shot right down to Tennessee. Um, you guys saw that video. Obviously, that video was produced. I actually left the day after I filmed that. Um, but regardless, we went right down to Tennessee. I spent about a week there just trying to help out the family as best as I knew how. Um, in reality, I don't really think I accomplished a lot other than just being supportive of a friend of mine. So... I don't really know what else to say about that. Um, I, see, I don't really know what else to say about that, to be honest. I uh, wound up meeting some cool people. Um, Jason from Rebuild Rescue came down, and then Yuri from 23rd Garage came down as well. So um, I was in communication with James Pretty. Um, it didn't work out that he wound up coming up. Uh, to be honest, Tim was kind of like he didn't want it to become like a big crap show where everybody showed up. But uh, there were some guys just weren't gonna take no for an answer. So Jason and Yuri, they were like, um, yeah, we're coming. Well, Yuri was needed because he had to haul that Austin Healy out. But anyway, so we might have projects coming up with 23rd. Um, I did manage to drag the Galaxy out of storage. Plan was I was gonna get it running and driving, replace the brakes, replace the tires, all of that stuff. Uh, needs a fuel pump, it had to be pushed in here, which it used to run really, really good. Um, but it needs work. So anyway, the thought process with the Galaxy, just to run with that squirrel, is I wanted to get it running and driving good and then figure a way to paint it. I might work with 23rd Garage on that, I'm not sure. Uh, we're talking about it, but they have issues they have to work out as well. So leave a comment here, leave a comment there if you want them to see paint this car. I don't have the ability to paint in this shop right now. Um, so just in the interest of getting projects out the door, um, let's just see what we could do, but we're kind of running into this logistical problem of too many projects, not enough completed. So, and I am way, way, way too busy. So with that coming up, I want to talk to you about some other stuff. Let's get into that real fast. Big news for the channel. Hopefully positive because growth is inevitable. I don't have a choice. It's become very obvious to anybody paying attention. I've been spectacularly busy. Um, I say all the time, I certainly have worked harder in my life, but I no way have ever been this busy in my life. Um, and that's not a complaint, that's a success, believe it or not. The problem is, um, I don't know how to explain this to people, but when you are a 24 year truck driver, you start to become, for lack of a better term, institutionalized. The best way I can think of is from the movie Shawshank Redemption, where they're talking about um, being in prison long term and then you're released. You don't know how to adapt to public because you're you're used to every minute of your life being told what to do, when to do it. You know, you wake up, you take a crap, you know, when to eat, when to sleep, all of that, right? Every minute of your day is figured out for you. Once you get out in the world, you don't know what to do. Well, these rigs do that to you in time. And modern trucks have gotten to the point where maybe back in the day when Orwell was brand new, most of the drivers, when they took downtime, you know, they might have hung out in the truck stops. Um, I started driving, I remember there was uh, telephones in each and every little booth at the restaurant for guys to be able to call home while they're waiting on their meal. And then you used to see drivers sitting in a TV lounge watching TV or movies or whatever. Um, but got, you know, remember the phone booths? One, you know, little doors with little little phone boots. I remember the days of buying buying calling cards off of guys and then uh, using them to call home. I mean, that's how it was. 
now the trucks got bigger and guys don't spend any time like this truck here obviously it's you know if you're not sitting in the seat you're laying in the bunk there's no you can't stand up in here and that was common if you did anything you hung out at the truck stop out of the truck but now they made these trucks like big houses well small houses and a big truck the problem is guys started living in them and i'll be honest with you i don't care what kind of jail cell you're ever in the biggest sleeper factory by Peterbilt is smaller than any jail cell you will ever spend a time in, whether in a county or a state, okay? There is minimum standards for prisoners that you can't put a guy in uh, a really small space for any extreme length of time. Well, if you don't hang in a truck stop and you're far from home, you are captured into that truck. Now, you're spending all your time in your sleeper and then you're scrapped 8, 9, 10, 12, up to 14 hours legally a day, strapped in that seat. You can't even do that to a prisoner. You cannot take a prisoner and strap him into a seat for 12 hours and think you're going to keep your job as a correctional officer. So, <laughs> trucking's worse than in jail at times. So after years and years and years of this, guys get institutionalized and they start to think that that's all they ever can do. And I face that to this day. It's a mental thing. We all deal with it. But you have to start learning. If you know what the problem is, you now know how to solve it. But now you have to have the guts to do it. And that's what we're talking about right here and right now. So what's the remedy for all of this? Well, how do you solve the problem of being so busy that you put your own mind into a tizzy? Well, we're standing in it, boys and girls. Now, this place has never been fully set up yet. This place meaning my shop. I mean... I still have all this stuff just piled. I it, None of it's organized. It's at least piled in a way that makes sense, but none of it's organized. You know, the square body, another project never got done. Um, there's a load bed for it sitting up on a rotisserie. Um, the Chevelle that, that was on a rotisserie, that's in storage. Uh, got the Mustang, it seems to just, the project that never ends. That's frustrating. The other Chevelle, the 68, I, I mean, with everything gone on, I just haven't had the time. So how in the hell am I ever going to get anything done? Now, I moved into this building because it was bigger, and it's easier to get the trailer in. In fact, I can get the entire semi-trailer up in here. You can't get a van trailer in here, though, because the ceiling's a little low over here, but it's plenty, plenty high over there on that side. So the way it is, it's tall on that side, then it slopes downward to this direction over here, right? But other than a van trailer, you can get a whole semi in here. So that works out good. That's why we got this building. Believe me, it's, it costs a lot more than the other one. But when this opportunity came up, I was smart enough to take it because why? Well, we're growing. We don't have an option. We have to grow. I cannot do all this alone. So what happened was I was putting some videos up and I said, hey, I need some help getting some work done around here. Anybody want to you know, get take on a part-time mechanic job around here? So we got a guy coming in and uh, that's what he's going to do. He's going to help me work on Orwell. Um, on a part-time basis and that'll free me up to start doing some automotive stuff also um i also have my welder maggie she's going to come in this week too so i'm not really sure how much of all of them are going to be on video but that's the basic game plan is to start freeing me up so today my project is i got to figure out what i need to get these stacks hooked up so right here we got the new exhaust system set up right here uh the clamps are in the pickup truck i gotta go get them still but yeah, I just bought this over there down in Oshkosh. Just picked it up yesterday, dropped it off. So we went with uh, seven inch straight cuts, seven inch elbow to tuck right underneath that cab. But uh, the mounts are not right. So I have to figure out how to alter those mounts so that way the new exhaust system will, will work with the factory stanchions. Um, they were cut. So we're gonna focus on the bit by bit part of working on Orwell. That's gonna be on FSC Truck Shop channel. So I'm not gonna bore you to tears with all of that, but yeah, that's what we're doing is putting that together. Um, it's developed a starter problem again. The injector pump leaks oil onto the starter. So after a while, the relay starts going bad and you gotta hit the button, boop, 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 and finally it'll fire. And uh, it's starting to become, you gotta hit it a lot more than I like. So starter get replaced too. So yeah, I had to look, look towards uh, outside help. I had to hire some help. So that way I can actually start having other people work on Orwell and I could try to get the rest of this complete disaster of a shop figured out and straightened up. Like I said, meanwhile, I want to try to get other projects done, at least this here. The idea is get this out of storage, get it running, and then it's out of storage and then I can work on it. This is another thing too I wanted to touch base about, how I work this channel. Uh, this is getting complicated and difficult for me because I'm not a professional 
YouTuber, despite what everybody says. I'm better at trucking than I am, but like somebody trying to not be institutionalized, you have to uh, figure out how to expand outward and do things that you're not comfortable with that may actually help you. So on the channel side of things, this is the changes coming. Now I'm smart enough to realize that you have to grow with the trends. Now, you gotta bear in mind, I'm 45 years old, so I'm young enough, but also might be too old or not old enough. It kind of depends on where in the world you sit. This modern day social media world and these platforms is very confusing to a guy like me. Um, I remember when Facebook was harmless, now it seems to be the dredge on society. Um, YouTube, the content out there is unbelievable. There's so much of it. Um, I tend to put reality to things. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't even watch television anymore, like regular TV shows. There are a few shows that I binge watch a little bit when I have the time at home. Um, but and even that, that's fantasy stuff. I tend to watch more YouTube than anything else. Um, you can watch friends of mine like Tim Gentry. It's the day-to-day, -day, the real grind. I mean, that's what life actually is. You know, other, other bigger channels with uh, exotic cars and stuff. Um, off-road recovery channels these things are actually done it's not special effects and you know I don't you know it's not like American Truck Simulator and I've seen a bunch of them you guys have made Orwell up quite a many times I've seen many videos but that's all like VR that's virtual reality ie fake doesn't actually exist this truck actually exists and we actually drive it around so that's the kind of content that I like that I watch is the real stuff the real challenges in life, how to build a business, how to survive a business, you know, how to not get, you know, business-wise killed out there, you know, how to survive. How does Orwell, as old and antiquated as it is, how do I continue to still make money with a truck that supposedly is impossible to make money? Everyone screams up and down, fuel economy is the name of the game. Well, is it? You know, look at uh, the issues with the EPA. The EPA worries about what comes out of them stacks. Does not care about how much fuel you burn to get it there. You follow what I'm saying? So what works in business, what don't? That's the reality side of YouTube. And that's what I watch. That's what I try to bring you guys is how I actually do it. What do I do to make this work? Well, there we are. Try to be live, try to be real. Try to just bring it to you and be entertaining at the same time. Now, how do I bring that back to social media? Well, I really don't even know how to work social media properly, to be honest with you. Um, some could say I'm pretty ignorant with it, meaning that, well, I have an FSC trucking uh, Facebook. Um, I think I have an Instagram. No, I do have an Instagram. I don't even know what name it's under. I don't know how to work that stuff, to be honest. Um, now, YouTube has been working with content creators to try to help them uh, expand and get better. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to make this work and how to make it beneficial for you guys along with me. Um, YouTube Shorts, I'm going to try to get them going here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is use Shorts as a coming attraction of what's coming. So that way the Shorts will be current to what's going on on a daily basis. That way you guys can keep track of me and where I am. You got to bear in mind, like I said, there was no gap in content between Seattle to now. Content wise, in reality, that was a month or so ago, maybe longer, I don't really know, I'd have to look. So the shorts are gonna be current, like the day I release them is the day I film them. That way you'll see what's coming up. And I'll try to stay current with that as, an, as best as I can. Now there's another controversial thing that YouTube suggests that I try to do. And it's a monetary thing. Um, I don't know if I like the idea. And I can explain to you why I don't like the idea, but I think I'm gonna try it because it might enable me to get into projects, things that are not being done fast enough to my liking. And if I have people here working with me to get projects done, then maybe I'll do it. Now everybody knows I've been talking about getting a second truck running. And I do have another truck. I've got that little 79 352 Peterbilt, that Hornet looking truck. Um, that truck I could start working on. It's in running condition. You guys saw in the last video where I put it in storage. It is in running condition. It will start and drive, just obviously not on the road. It's got too many issues with it. But I've been thinking about 
getting another truck running to put a driver in, but that's not necessarily going to be the most entertaining thing on planet Earth for you guys to watch. Just, um, just another truck. I have been thinking about getting that other truck on the road as a spare truck for Orwell. But that puts me in a monetary bind on how to do that. I mean, that's rebuilding a whole nother truck. So one of the things that YouTube was meant to be is to, the whole membership thing. If you see on the bottom of a channel, it'll say you can join and it costs X amount a month and then you can get, um, you click on the join button and I'm not, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do this or not. I have to think. I want to see what you guys say in the comments on it. But if I go through that whole thing of a subscription-based or membership-based content, um, I don't like the idea of keeping content for certain people that pay more. But it is a monetary thing to help grow. I might actually go that route. So my thought process is now, and I want you to leave comments and tell me what you think. If I go that route with it, I was thinking about using that money to start putting into the 352. And then the 352 for a while would be exclusive to the membership as opposed to the general subscription base out there. I That's what I'm thinking of anyway. Eventually that would be released out to the general public, but I, I don't know how much that would bring and would that extra would enough people follow me in that venture? Now that's the thing I don't know. Would enough people follow me in that venture to actually pay to repair and work on that truck? Now there's a lot of work on that truck that can be done when I'm not here. So I'd have to have it filmed while I'm gone. So my mechanic can film it or I, you know somebody else, maybe a videographer, but see how it starts costing money. That's the thing. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. You know, so I'm thinking about, now what else if I did? Now you guys tell me, leave a comment again. If I do a membership-based content thing with that join setup, what would you do? What would you prefer me to do, I should say? What would you like me to put on that content? What would you like as members? What would you like to see? Now some things I can't show or won't show, but Throw it out there. What would you like to see on the membership side of the channel if I go ahead and start that? Let me know in the comments. We got to talk about that. So inevitably, there are things that I can do to help try to create the channel to be better, to bring my brand up to be better than it is. Um, this video today is as raw as it's going to get. And to be honest, the next few videos, it's going to be more along the line of here in the shop and working on the truck and trying to get Orwell up to snuff. And I hope you guys follow me with that because I'm really excited to get Orwell fixed up and get some of these projects done with Orwell. That way, uh, that truck is in much better condition to make better videos out there on the road. Um, yeah, we've just been getting hit after hit after hit around here. And uh, the last one, man, it was rough. It, it was rough. But... We're getting through it, you know, we're getting through it. I guess I really wasn't clear about some other things. And I really am debating whether I'm going to talk about it or not. And to be honest, as I'm filming this, I may have just edit it out. I don't really know. But uh, after we left the Tim Gentry fire scene, and then I came home and was working on Orwell, um, Jennifer had a really big loss in her family. Um, a very close family member to her passed away. I'm not going to get into the details of that, but that caused us to basically just jump right in a car and shoot out to Philadelphia and then handle uh, preparing a funeral and then being there at the funeral. And that took a lot of time and that took a lot away from Jen right there just to be able to handle all that because it was real rough to be her for, well, to be honest, it still is. <laughs> that didn't change. It just went from bad to worse and now it's just dealing with the aftermath of it. But yeah, um, so we had to be in uh, Philadelphia for a while too, and that financially really took a took a hit around here too. Failed to mention that earlier, but yeah, that's kind of what's been going on. So it's been one, two, three, boom, 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 one right after the other. You just keep taking the hits, but right now I'm eager to just try to make what became a dungeon of my shop to start being more productive, get Orwell back in better condition. That way we can uh, start making better videos for you guys. So this is first step right here as far as the appearance and look. Um, I really wasn't planning on doing stacks, but actually I was, but I didn't know when I would do it and that made a decision for me. So that's what we're gonna go do. So I'm gonna end the video here today. I gotta go get the last of the clamps out of the pickup and I still need to get more pieces because if you see right there on the hood, there's a Y pipe right there, like a factory one, not a, 
um, a homemade one, which is why I used to have one stack smoke more than the other. And I got a lot of comments about that because, you know, the white pipe wasn't perfect. So we actually bought a factory, I mean, not a factory, but a uh, pre-made Y pipe. So we're going to figure out how to make that exhaust work. Once I get that done, we're going to get rolling and uh, start making good content for you guys. That's basically all I have for you guys today. Um, yeah, I, I think this week we're just basically going to be in a shop. But yeah, back to what I was saying earlier. Leave a comment. What do you think? I'm going to try to do these YouTube shorts to try to get you guys to know current what I'm doing day by day. And then the videos, the big production videos, they'll catch up as we go. And then uh, also the membership side of the channel. Let me know what you think. Is that something I should do? Um, would you guys join? I, I don't... Does YouTube set the pricing? I set the pricing? I'm not sure. But if we do, I want to use that extra money that it brings to try to do a side project. Um, deal with the 12V71 and deal with the uh, the 352. The 352 will not be getting the, three, the 12V71. That's not in the plan. But I want a special truck for that uh, 12V71. So we got to figure that out. Leave a comment. What do you think? We're going to end it right there. All right, guys, thanks.